Praise the Lord. How many is excited to be in the house of the Lord this Wednesday night? Did you come with expectancy? Do you believe that God is still on the throne and He can do miracles? Why? He's alive. Will you stand with us right now and let's sing a song? He is alive. Boy, that's dead. I said He is alive. That's better because we came to worship Him this Wednesday night and lift Him up.
Praise the Lord. Maybe they don't want me to speak tonight. You can go ahead and be seated. I want to start off tonight by giving thanks to my pastor and thanks for you all for listening to me tonight. But I just wanted to start with a question of, have you ever broke anything? So, flashback to about two years ago, to me, on a Saturday morning, about 2 a.m., sitting in front of my old car, mad because I couldn't get one little piece about yay big, connected line from the, the car to the battery, and it gave the car power. And because of how the car was designed, because of that one little piece not working, being broken, my car wouldn't run. So that got me to thinking this week, sometimes we find ourselves broken. And in the process of being broken, we find ourselves in pits of depression or pits of anxiety or feeling like nothing we do is good enough, and we think that that just affects us. But 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says, But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where the body? But, all, but now... Are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. We are all members in the body of Christ. For a body to be working correctly and to move correctly, every piece in the body of the church has to be working has to be efficient because if one little part, just like that car, if one little part is broken, if one little part isn't doing their job right, the rest of that body isn't going to work as efficiently. Is it, it isn't going to move forward. is isn't going to reach to who we need to reach to. And tonight, I want to challenge every one of us to stay firm in our belief and firm in our work that God has put before us so that we as the body can move forward into what God has planned for us. Well, somebody shout praise the Lord. Amen. And he will take those broken pieces and put them back together. It brings a story to mind. I'm not going to say it right now. But Isaiah said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Aren't you glad of that? But it didn't stop right there. He went on to say, Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Every time we pray and we lift our voices, Pastor taught it well last night. We can read the Scriptures and pray the Scriptures. But you know, when we call upon the Lord, He hears us. The Bible says that all power in heaven and earth is His. And you know, when we Bible says for two or three gathered together in my name, there, where? He's right here. How many came in Jesus' name tonight? Look at here. All around us, there's people right here that's in the name of Jesus. So He's here. 
And I'm going to ask you, we got a lot of needs right here. And number one, let's have revival. It's Wednesday night. It's Bible study. But you know God's still here to pour out the Holy Ghost? He's here for st- healing. He's here for salvation. Whatever, He's here. If you've got a need in your life or know of a need, and you've got enough faith to stand, would you stand and represent that need right now? Why don't you look all around you? Look at your brothers and sisters around you. They're representing the need. It may be here. It may not. But why don't we lift our hands right now? Can we lift our voice right now? God, I love you. I thank you so much that we can come to you and know that all power in heaven and earth is yours. And, Lord, your word says you'll never leave us or you'll never forsake us, but you'll always be with us even until the end of time. And all these needs that stand in its representation, Lord. God, you know their thoughts, their intents, and the list that I have here right now. God, I ask you to move on it right now. Touch hearts and souls of men and women who they may be. And, Lord, we pray for revival. We want more of you than we've ever had. Because, Lord, we know the day's coming where there will not be what we feel today. Use us, bless us, touch the Word of God tonight. Forgive us where we're feeling, and we ask it all in Jesus' name. How many wants Him to take your hand? Would you lift your hands right now?
Amen. I ask you that you would come prepare to wait upon us. And uh, what, a, what a great opportunity that we have to let the Lord take our hand tonight. Amen. That he is there with an outstretched hand. And, uh, you know, we, I, I know I preach from the thought of, you know, we can't go too far. I believe it was a couple of years ago. Uh, it's probably been that long as I think uh, I used it, that thought at the jail thing before COVID. Uh, but can God get his hand on you? Uh, God, is, we are, how many of you want the anointing of God? Amen. Want the direction of God. Um, it's hard for the anointing of God to rest on us if his hand cannot touch us. And uh, I need his hand in my life. You need his hand in your life. Amen. So we need to, to, to seek that. Amen. God, we love you so much. Thank you for your spirit that we feel in this place. God, I thank you, Lord. God, for this opportunity to gather to worship you. I pray, God, that you would bless this part of our service, Lord, as we give. I pray, God, that we would be found faithful, Lord, that we can stand on your word and find that your word is faithful, that you will return, God, that you will bless. I thank you, Lord, for everything that you've allowed us to be stewards over. Help us, Lord, to be found faithful with it. In the name of Jesus and the church said amen. Amen. As you're giving, um, let me just quickly make just a couple of quick announcements. I want to just quickly say, though, Last night, we had such a great turnout for prayer. It was right, almost 50 people here last night for prayer. And that is just a great turnout for prayer for those that's able to come. I want to say thank you so much. We are a testimony by the Lord, such Sister Regina. And we give God praise for that. Amen. Thankful just as a couple Sunday nights ago that, uh, that Sister Tammy went over and prayed with us. She'd been in pain before surgery. She had surgery, thought that was going to fix it. And that was... It was something else going on, but in that moment, in a service, in a moment, the Lord touched her, and she went home feeling different than she came to church feeling. That's the kind of God that we serve. We can never forget that, that he knows how and he is able. Uh, just also real quickly, ladies, don't forget in the morning, uh, y'all are leaving. I think I'm still meeting at 8 o'clock for prayer, uh, but going to be trying to pull out by 9 tomorrow morning. And so if you could be mindful of that for ladies' conference, we certainly are praying you all have a safe trip and a great trip together. And then Sunday, of course, we have two services, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And there are a lot of things going on in September. You can be seated, by the way. A lot of things going on in September. And I'm just several of, not just at our church, not just in our community, but several different churches around our uh, area are having some different things in the month of September and October uh, coming up. This weekend, for those not going to the ladies' conference and for our men that would like to go, Brother Huntley is going to be at uh, the sanctuary in New Albany. And uh, so if you would like to go there, they're celebrating 20 years uh, this weekend. But he's going to be preaching that Saturday night at 7 o'clock. For anybody interested in going to that, we certainly invite you to do that. Um, there, Our Section 1 Christmas for Christ banquet is coming up on October the 10th. And we are hosting that again. And so I'm sure there's going to be some uh, meetings regarding that coming up. And so if you can just be mindful of that as you're preparing and planning, uh, we might need some help for that. Brother Dobbs is going to be at um, Life Tabernacle there off of 72 in Corinth. And um, he's going to be there on the 23rd and 24th at 7 o'clock. And so if anybody's interested in going to that, we certainly uh, would like to for you to be mindful of that. In our community, on Wednesday, October the 5th, Wednesday, October the 5th, uh, how many of you remember the, the service we did at Tuscumbia Baptist last year that we went out on the lawn and we had an outside service? Uh, this year, we're having that service again. It's not going to be uh, out on the lawn of Tuscumbia. We're trying to make it uh, more intentional with getting to where we can meet as many young people as possible and so we're doing that at northeast campus and that is going to be on the 6th of october it's the week of general conference and uh but on that wednesday night on the 5th we're going to dismiss our service and we're going to gather with other churches from our community and we're going to go to the big circle at northeast 
and we're going to have a prayer meeting. And so be mindful of that as we get closer. And we're just going to pray that the Spirit of the Lord would touch hearts and, and introduce the love of Jesus to our community, to those college kids. And, but we're going to go out there that Wednesday and pray and just hand out some invites to the service for that Thursday. And so Wednesday night is prayer meeting out there. And then on that, as a matter of fact, that Tuesday, our family prayer, we'll omit that. That way you'll get a little break that week. And you'll come Wednesday to the circle at Northeast at 7. Uh, we'll probably do a little earlier in 7. I'll let you know exact time on that. Uh, but then on that Thursday at 6 o'clock, we'll begin pre-service activities there. Uh, and we're going to be... Um, uh, is it Waller Hall that we did upstairs? Is that this going to be at Waller Hall uh, in that little auditorium up there? And so above the cafeteria, that's the easiest way to explain. It's above the cafeteria there at Northeast. And so um, so be mindful of that. And we'll get you more information on that as it's coming. I know we said something earlier about ladies' conference. Men's conference is next weekend. And I know we've got some that's going to be going this year, so I'm excited about that. But if you are a man, raise God. And uh, I know in 2022, we have a little bit more challenges defining that, but it's still the same. But if you are a man, praise God, and, uh, and you want to go to men's conference, please uh, get with us. We want you to go. It's going to be around $100 a person. That includes your meal Friday night, your stay in the room Friday night, and all the gas expenditures. And so that's all inclusive. And so we certainly want to find all that out by Sunday for sure so we can get you registered. We want to all get everybody registered and uh, take a good group to men's conference. Amen. Well, we're going to get right back into the book of Ruth. And I'm thankful Brother Eric was able to take care of last Wednesday night. Did a great job. And uh, then the Wednesday before that, uh, Brother Soden did a great job. And just, uh, again, I said it's Sunday, but I'm so thankful for our ministry of our church. Amen. Aren't you? Hey, didn't you enjoy that ministry minute tonight? And Brother Aaron Lee, thank you all so, so much. Amen. We don't necessarily have a text tonight. I figure since it's been a couple of weeks, we might need to review a little bit. And so that's what we're going to attempt to do. And uh, I've enjoyed this Bible study through the book of Ruth. Um, there's so much good stuff in there. In all the Bible, really. But it's a lot easier to work through and to study through some of the books than others. Of those 66 books, there's a couple of them uh, that's kind of tough. And the Lamentations is probably not one of those that you just get excited about. And the Leviticus is probably one of those you don't get a lot, a lot of excitement about. But Ruth, you can get a little excited about. And so that's what we're doing. And so the story of Ruth, as we remember, I know because it's been seven weeks ago, so I know we all remember very well. That it starts with this man, this Hebrew man named Elimelech and his family, his wife Naomi. And uh, hard times came up into Bethlehem. A famine was coming in the land. And Elimelech's like, you know what? Uh, let's go to uh, Moab because they got plenty of stuff going on over there. Uh, let's go to Moab and we're going to be in a lot better shape if we stay here in Bethlehem. And so as soon as a famine comes to where he was, he's like, I am leaving here because things are better over there. That's what it basically boils down to. And we talked about how poor of a decision that was. Uh, the grass isn't always green on the other side, or if it is, there might be a reason why it's green. You can come to your own conclusion with that, praise God. But what Elimelech forgot to remember during that time of famine was that God had promised that he's going to sustain his people in the land that he brought them to. God is not in the business of bringing us to a place to make us die there. Now, there might be seasons that come to where it, it makes us question God, okay, give me some sense out of this as far as to how this is a blessing to me. How is this job a blessing to me or how is this position a blessing get, get, remind me oh god and that's kind of where limit like well, okay I, I just i cannot see any benefit that the blessings of god are just not here anymore because it is a famine and again that's why we talked a little bit last night we did a little bible study last night and 
some of the ones that were here last night said we don't have to come tonight because we got Bible study already on Tuesday night. And so you get a double whammy this week. But uh, but uh, <laughs> I was trying to be short last I'll probably be shorter tonight than I was last night. But anyhow, but uh, y'all y'all have to give me a break. I, I was gone a little while, so it, it was in me, praise God. I had to get it out. Uh, now, now that I'm done chasing that rabbit, let me get back to Ruth. But uh, see what happens to us preachers. But anyhow, I can't even remember what I was talking about. I don't remember what I was talking about. So, no, I can't. Sister L.A., don't laugh at me now. No, it's good to see you tonight. Uh, but but what, what I was getting at is, this is what I was getting at. So sometimes it's easier for us, whenever things are going good, to, to realize, okay, God, this is the right thing. But whenever things are not all of a sudden going like they were, or maybe things are bad, what we would call bad, then we all of a sudden we say, well, God's not in it. And last night we were talking about praying the scriptures and how important that is. Whenever we pray the word, it keeps us in contact with the word, number one. But it also provides us a foundation that we can build our walk with God upon, that even when tough times come, we'll find ourselves remaining in the will of God because we still have his word. And so Elimelech, the famine came, and it's like he forgot about the word because there was a famine. Can I say it like this? We got to be careful what we allow into our life that will put distance between God's word and us. You say, well, nothing can come between me and the word of God. Well, let me say it like this. We got to be careful what we allow into our life that affects our ability to stand on the word. Because there's a difference in having the word and being enough, having enough confidence to stand on the word. Because there's many of us that have a word and we've had a word. Now, I'm not just talking about I'm talking about a direct word for your life. And yet, because it hasn't come to pass yet, because there's been some obstacles introduced, you're not standing as firm on that word as you once did. And that's what happened to Elimelech. The famine caused Elimelech to get off the word, if you will. He still had the word. He just wasn't standing on it. He wasn't obeying it. He wasn't trusting it. Having a Bible on your coffee table isn't going to make your life better. But when you stand on this word, when you pray this word, when you trust this word, it doesn't matter if the famine's there or if the plenty's there. You're going to stay in Bethlehem. Amen? And so uh, that they left Bethlehem. i got to hurry. They, they left Bethlehem. And uh, we, we know that was a costly journey for them because the two sons that... Um, Elimelech and Naomi had, they married these Moabite women, and they died. So they lost their sons, and now, then Elimelech died. Uh, and so now Elimelech's not there. The two sons are, are gone, and you got Naomi and these two daughter-in-laws, and you got Orpah and Ruth, and, and they're going to be leaving Moab. Naomi, all of a sudden, all the grief, she's like, you know what, I just... And this is just a perfect story of how it happens because we leave the things of God and all of a sudden we find the bottom and we start realizing, I got to get back. I got to get back to Beth. I got to get back to church. I got to get back to my walk with God because now all of a sudden we realize that no matter how good it looked in Moab, it's not done anything good for our lives. And that's what happened here. So Naomi's like, I got to go back to Bethlehem. And she initially was okay with Orpah and Ruth coming where, but then all of a sudden she begins thinking about, hmm, um, I, I might want to make this journey by myself. And so if I go back by myself, I want you young ladies, I want y'all to go back to Moab because if y'all come with me, y'all, y'all never going to be married women. Y'all probably going to be single the rest of your life. And I don't have any other sons. And so uh, I'm too old to remarry. Nothing's going to, you're just going to be single the rest of your life. And 
And she does her best to convince them, and she was able to convince Orpah to go back to Moab. And we learned that Ruth, though, she clinged to Naomi. She, she got so determined that after time after time after Naomi tried to get her to leave too. And, and so this is the, really the turning point where we just really find out what Ruth is made of. And, and she said this, she said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest I will go, and, and where thou lodgest I will lodge. Thy people's going to be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death put part thee and me. Where you're buried, Naomi, I'm, gonna, I'm not leaving you, Naomi. And she convinces Naomi, just leave me alone and let me come. And so that's that's what that's what happened. But you know, we got church people today that don't even open the door of opportunity for them to leave because bless God, that's what they're looking for. They just looking for the right person to say the right thing or the wrong thing. And we gone. Just give me a reason. And instead of that song, give me one reason. Well, I better not. Y'all did. We do a Bible study, praise God. But what Naomi, when she goes to Bethlehem, what she realizes is, is that those Hebrew people were never even broken by the famine. I'm going to say that again. When she made it back to Bethlehem, after leaving because of a famine, she gets back there, and all of a sudden she's looking around she's like, wait a second. We left here because it was better in Moab, yet now I get back to home. And these people that went through a famine, man, they're doing better than I'm doing. And I've been in a place of plenty. But it doesn't matter if it's a place of plenty if it's outside of the promise of God. Go back to where you got your word. And just see if God has to sustain the path that that word came from. Amen? Because instead of being hurt by the famine, they were actually blessed through it. Because they stayed faithful. And Naomi, just like, hey, you know what? There, there, there's, there's some people in Christianity that they feel like the whole world of Christianity, the whole, the whole life of the church dwells on them. That if they left or if they then they feel like then the church is going to fall apart. And then they have to look from a dead. Oh, my goodness. There's blessing and God's doing great things and this and that. And, and, some, and that Naomi sees what's happened in Bethlehem. And she starts, man, I, I, we, why did we leave? Why did I, why did I leave Bethlehem? And, and that finally we, we make it through that first day. And I, I'm telling you, I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to get through some, some new stuff tonight. But I. I'm, I'm excited about this Bible study. Amen. But don't you just love it how that God uses what seems to be happenstance to work his perfect plan? It's not a coincidence. You can never look at it and say it's a coincidence that I'm here tonight. It's a coincidence that this happened. No, 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 no. God has a perfect plan. Amen. And so, again, Naomi and Ruth, they're there in Bethlehem, and they're just they're hungry. They, they don't have anything. Uh, and so Ruth says, I'm going to go work in the fields as a gleaner. And we learn that the gleaners are the ones that come behind the reapers, and they get the extras, and they get the little corners that's supposed to be left. And, and that's what she was doing. And, and to make this lengthy story a little shorter, praise God, when Boaz comes to the field, boy, Ruth gets his attention. She catches his eye. And he is just, who is that? That's not exactly King James Version, but that's what was happening there. And so, long story short, he goes to her and he's like, look, I want you to stay in my field. I don't want you to go to another field. I don't want you to look another place. I want you to stay in my field. And I want you to, to make sure you go to my field. You stay. I want you to connect yourself to, the, to my maidens. I want you to connect yourself to my people. Here's what every one of us need to know. Look to your left and look to your right real quick. We have to stay connected to each other. That's why it's important. That's why we put a calendar out there in the 
in the foyer and we give opportunities for people to come together and to worship. I mean, we, we have somewhere around 20, 30 things a month, opportunities a month for people to come together. That's what that's for. But if you allow the enemy to separate you from that, then you will month after month say, I, I just, I'm not connected. I just can't get connected. But yet, if you look at that calendar, put you a check mark by everything that you're a part of. And then tell me why you can't get connected. That's the reason why we, we don't do it just because we ain't got nothing else to do. Um, we do that because we want to provide, get connected with my mate and with my, with my people. So that whenever they go, you may not be as close as some others, but, but if you go where they go and you do what they do, and you're, you're going to be in the right place at the right time every time. Because they're, they're there. And so that's what happens. And so Boaz, he said, look, and furthermore, I'm going to give you some mercy, and I'm going to make sure that none of those, evidently she must have been a good-looking young lady, and so... He said, I I told my young men to leave you alone. Don't be whistling at you. Don't be giving you those comments and don't be harassing you. That's what he said. I I told him to leave you alone. He said, I'm going to let you drink water like my other people drink water. And in response, Ruth, she says unto him, why have I found grace in your eyes? You ever wonder with your relationship with God, God, why have I found grace in your eyes? Who am I that you are mindful of me? And Boaz probably surprised her whenever he gave his answer. He said, I've heard that you've taken real good care of your mother-in-law. Every man in here that's got a mother-in-law. Every woman that's got a mother-in-law. I got a good one, praise God. You hear that, baby? I know you're watching maybe later, but I got, <laughs> but I got, a, good, I got a good mother-in-law. She takes good care of us, takes good care of the boys, and helps us out when we need them. And she's real kind. But he said, I've, I've heard how you've been taking care of Naomi. And I, I've heard you've been real kind to her. And this right here is just going to be a little repayment for what? In other words, you don't ever do anything that goes unnoticed by God. And I don't want to get ahead of myself, but again, Boaz is a type of a Christ and Ruth, the type of the church and that relationship. And so it, it never goes unnoticed. You may not get recognized from the platform or the pulpit, and we're trying to do better about recognizing people because we want, we're honors do. We want to give honor. But praise God, don't do it because you want a, a rose petal put on yourself. Don't do it because you're trying to gain something out of it. Amen. Matter of fact, you do some good to do something nice for somebody and not post it on Facebook. I get a little angry sometimes. I want to be careful how I say that. But it is. It's sickening sometimes to see Christian people put videos and big old long posts almost like making these people ashamed that they're helping them. I mean, if you're on hard times and you need something, you don't want somebody putting you on camera on Channel 3 News. I gave them a box of cookies. I went and got a little Caesar's pizza and no, that's self-promotion. I don't care how you slice it. Well, glory. It does good sometimes just to do stuff just because it's supposed to do it. Not for some kind of pat on the back or anyhow. That's my little soapbox, and I'm going to get off of it real quick. But that pretty much brings us up to chapter 2, verse number 14. And all this is going on in Ruth's first morning in the field, praise God. But let's look at our text for tonight. Boaz said unto her, at mealtime, boy, this is why I'm going to get excited about tonight. Everybody say mealtime. At mealtime, come thou hither and eat of the bread and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers and he reached her parched corn and she did eat and was sufficed and left. And when she was risen up to glean, in other words, she's going back to work. Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean among the sheaves and reproach her not, and let 
falls also some of the handful. Like, listen to this. This is good right here. Whew. Some of the what? Handfuls of purpose for her. Boy, that's good stuff right there. Let, <laughs> well, glory. Some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. Just drop stuff as you're reaping and let her pick it up and don't say a word to it. So she gleaned in the field until even and beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And now again, we learn that Boaz in this story is a type or role of Christ and that would be coming in the future, and, and we see that in many ways from beginning to the end of the story. And it kind of lets us know how Jesus views us, that we get things that we don't deserve, that we don't work for, that he just pours out stuff in our life that just because he's good and he's faithful, we're thankful that he's that kind of God. Somebody say amen. And so what, what should happen here is that Boaz, his servants go eat from the meal that he's prepared them and he's brought them to the field, but they should be the only ones that's taken of this meal right here because she is a gleaner. She's supposed to bring her own sack lunch. Or not eat. Just like the water that she's supposed to have to go back to the well and fetch. But he said, no, you're in my field. I want you to drink with my servants. And I want you to partake of the water that they partake of. And I want you to come now get this food that's normally for the hired servants only. But those gleaners aren't supposed to have that. But yet Ruth found grace. Mm Mm-hmm. And... Again, Ruth and Naomi, she's desperate. You ever been desperate? I mean, I, I've been on hard times in my life before, but I, I don't, I, I'll be honest with you, and I, I'm not going to lie to anybody and say that I've ever been at risk of going hungry because I could probably go a few days or a month or so without eating and, and be all right. Praise God. But there are people in our world that are truly going hungry. Just as in, there's times in our life where we feel like that we just, we need something more. We've got to have that extra touch, and yet we neglect knowing that God has never left us. But because we're not seeing the lightning and thunder, if you will, I'm not talking about storms. I'm talking about just a continuous manifestation of the, the provisions of God where the ravens or the doves are coming and bringing us food. And, and we think that God's not working and God's not moving in our life because we don't wake up speaking in tongues like a Chinaman. And, and we forget that God is faithful to us every moment of every day. But because of the condition that Ruth was truly in and Naomi was truly in, it's very likely that she didn't even bring a sack lunch with her because she had nothing. That's the reason why she went to the field in the first place. She wanted to, I got to get some for me and Naomi. We're going to die. And so, but Boaz goes and he, he gives her a big invitation. I want you to come sit with us. Come dine at my table. And that's very important for us. Because something that we have familiar in the South, in Mississippi, is that you invite somebody to your house for a meal, that's a sign of hospitality. And that's like it was in the Middle East and like it is there. And and so Boaz's invitation to come eat at his table with his hired help is like a move of hospitality toward this Moabite woman. To be nice to somebody that everybody's not supposed to be nice to. Somebody says, that's pretty awesome. Amen. Number one reason why this is so important because Boaz is out there, even if it was his hired service, he's out there as the owner of the field. He's out there with them. Now, that, <laughs> that's not something that you would see every day, I'm sure. But then he sits down on this day, and what he does caught everybody by surprise. Not only is he there, but he is serving roasted grain with this bread and vinegar to Ruth. This Moabite woman is getting some good food. I mean, she's not getting left off. I mean, she's getting some of the good stuff. 
and these laborers are starting to see, hey, you know what? He's treating her a little different than he treats other strangers. And uh, and so they're there, they're eating this meal. Anybody ever sop the bread? You know what I'm talking about? You got some gravy in your, your plate somewhere, or you, you got, after breakfast especially, you got some juices running around, you got that, I like my eggs over medium just so that juice from the egg will get in my plate so I can take that bread and sop it up. That's right. And so that's what I'm sure was going on there. She got that bread and that vinegar. and You know, because that bread, I'm sure it's not the softest. It's probably not. I mean, I didn't cook it, but it's, but I'm sure it's a little crusty. But you get some, you get some sop on there, and it'll make it to where you can chew it. Right? And so I'm sure that's what was going on right there. Y'all help me tonight. Praise God. But instead of her not having anything to eat, she's now at the table with the owner of the field, with his hired servants, and she's getting some of the best there is to offer there. And now, what do you say? I'm saying, so let, let's put this picture together. So normally in the field, the commentary says that that, that what happens is the best heads of barley were set aside. So it's as you're gathering it up, if you get, you come across the good stuff, you set it aside because that's going straight to the table. It's like if you're picking a tomato that's just right, it's just ready to cut right now. Like you don't wait, you don't wait and put that in there on the counter and let that set for three or four days. No, you go ahead and get you some bread and some mayonnaise and some salt and pepper and you get the knife out and you cut it and you make your tomato sandwich today. And so those good heads of barley, that's, all, that's what's going on. So you've got those good heads of barley, and they're set aside, the ones that's not too ripe, green, and they're just perfect. And they would tie them things together in these little small bundles, and, and they would build a fire, and, and they'd go to the edge of the field, and they'd roast that barley over the fire, and that's what was at the table that day. But usually that's just for the important people. It's a delicacy. It's something that's special. It's a special treat. It's that, that bone, that, that wishbone that I've heard some old-timers talk about, the pulley bone, they call it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And then all of a sudden, as their, Ruth is sitting there with Boaz and partaking of all this, everybody starts realizing that um, this is more than just a normal, a normal outsider. Boss man has found, is giving mercy to this lady. But more than mercy, but he's given her favor. Not just mercy, but favor. And that's just like God. We don't just He's not just a God of grace and a God of mercy. But as his people, we have favor with him. We have access to everything good about him. And that's a lot, by the way. And we've got access to that. Because there's no way that Boaz should be there with her, allowing all that stuff to happen to her. But not only did he feed her, he gave her more than enough. Because remember, Ruth wasn't just there for Ruth. She was there for her and Naomi. And you know what I found in living for God? That whenever I serve God, and it's not just about me, that God has a way of not only meeting my needs, but also giving me enough. To be a blessing to somebody else. Well, God's just not meeting my needs, and God just think this, and God, well, are you faithful? I just can't do this, and I just can't do that. Are you paying your tithes? I'm just, just saying. Are you placing God in a position? And there's not any other area of our life that, that these promises are attached to. But are you placing God in a position to where he has to bless you? Because he's bound by his word. I've told you before, I when it, right before Caden was born, my wife, we had already set out she's going to be a stay-at-home mama, bless God. And I told you she was making more money than I was making. It, but we, we worked it out, praise God. Well, we had it planned out at a certain time. We was going to have everything paid off. And my income was going to take care of our bills. And we were going to be okay. And and two months before she's supposed to get off of work, she comes down with a blood pressure issue. 
and they put her on bed rest and send her home from work two months early. And we ain't got everything paid off yet. And it's, and we had been, we ain't got a lot saved either because we've been putting everything. We went Dave Ramsey 100%. So we had our little thousand dollars and everything extra was going to the bill. Everything. There was no wiggle room. And she had to go home. And we had no extra. Within just a matter of days or weeks, it seemed like we just bought our house there in Omaha, so we just bought a house. And then she gets bedridden, and then I go to work one day. We'd been bought up by a bigger corporation, and they came in one day, pulled our department in, and said, we don't, we're gonna, we don't need your department anymore. So we're giving you a severance, and you got to find something. And I was like... Uh, can I leave today and just spend some time? <laughs> but I'll never forget going to my car because we're just taking on these other commitments and lining everything up. And my wife had just got sent home on bed rest. And I, I don't want to, I'm just trying to help somebody tonight. But I literally did this. I went into my car in the church parking lot and I got out my little records of, okay, God, I have been faithful to pay my tithes since I was just a little kid. I've never had a problem being faithful with giving. I love to give. That's, that's one of those things. Some people have problems with giving. I love to give. And so I, I pay my God. I, I, I don't want to just, I don't just give you the minute. I want to, I, 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 I give you more than, than what you asked me because I just, and you said to prove you. In less than three days, I had a better job that they bought my clients from the old company. And I ne basically, it's like I never changed jobs. I still work with I just changed the name on my shirt and the name on the business card. I had better. And that was the man that I was introduced, that I was working for, that allowed me when we moved to Indiana, that he let me fly back and forth. And all I worked was Wednesday morning, I flew into Omaha, and I flew out Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And I never, he never changed my pay. He paid for all my flights and allowed me to stay in the ministry. God orchestrated that whenever my wife was two months early on rest. And I promise you, I believe with all of my heart, had I not been faithful, that I'd be bankrupt somewhere. But I believe that with everything in me, that because of the faithfulness that, that I can look back and I told God, God, you said. And I hope that's the way I pray because I was, I was, I don't, I, I've told, I don't stress about, but when it comes to money, I stress, man. And I, I, I was stressed to the max. I was already stressed out about my wife. And then all of a sudden I don't have a job. Like, God, you got to do something. And he did. But it was because of me being faithful. I, 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 you can't convince me otherwise. And so if people say, I can't afford it. No, let me tell you something. You can't afford to not be faithful. I don't got distracted tonight, praise God. But I, I, I'm trying to help us tonight. I want us to live in the blessings of God. Because God not only gives you enough for yourself, but he will always give you enough whenever you come to him the right way. He'll always give you enough, not just to be enough for you, but to help somebody else. Because he wants you to be used by him. Every single time. Every single time. Somebody say amen. And when she's done eating, there's enough for Naomi. And she's full. She didn't, she didn't just eat a couple bites and save some. No, there was... Enough for her to get full and to take home. Not like me and my wife from Hawaii. We just split everything, you know. We just All the meals get split, praise God. <laughs> um, there was a, a situation where she got up from the table hungry still. She got everything she needed and had enough to take home. That's the kind of blessing God wants to give you every time you come into the house of God.
He wants to give you enough to get through whatever you've been through since Sunday night. But not just to make you feel good tonight. He wants to give you enough to make it till you get back here on Sunday morning. That's the kind of God that we serve. If you believe that, why don't you just give the Lord a hand clap? I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. He wants to fill your cup till it's overflowing. I believe that. Amen. And that's what we see in Jesus as his ministry is on the earth. He fed people. He, he feeds them until they're, they're overflowing, more than enough. That's normal for him. It's normal. Somebody say it's normal. And we see that in this story. God's providing for Ruth through Boaz, but not just enough for her. <laughs> because before this story's over, this man is going to be her redeemer. If you just hang on, the story's not over for your life. He's more than just your deliverer out of your addictions. He's more than just your deliverer out of your financial troubles. But he will redeem your soul. Come on, when you've tried everything else and nothing else has worked, you need to keep letting yourself go to him. And you're going to find he's going to be more than enough. i got to hurry, bless God. Verse 15, man. When she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. Let also some of the handfuls of purpose for her and leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. This is the final thing that Boaz was saying to his workers before he leaves that day. He gives those harvesters a reminder. You don't do, let her pick up whatever she finds her hands to pick up. Reminds me of the promise he gave Abraham. That wherever your feet go, that's what I'm giving to you. Look at, look at all the stars. I, it's, it's, there's going to be people after you. Amen. That, that's, that's what is happening with Ruth. Everything that she came to, that normally there wouldn't be hardly anything there, but she was getting a full wage of reaping, if you will. She was getting so much as a gleaner. And this is what's crazy. She's not even having to pick up or cut off the things that she's getting. Let me say that again. She's getting all this extra as she's walking through the fields that a gleaner would normally have to. Is there any? No, is there some over there? No. But she's getting all these handfuls of purpose and she ain't having to cut one stalk. Because God has already went before. Or Bo, again, this is a type, that's the way God works. He goes before us. But if we spend our lives trying to fight our own battles and to fix our own problems, then we're never going to experience his provision. Because he'll let us figure it out as long as we want to try. He'll let us do it our way. But if you'll finally let him take you. He'll help you. Amen. Praise God. God's hand fulls a purpose, he said. If we'll stay in his field, church, he's got so much purpose that he has for every single one of us. It don't matter how unuseful or how unvaluable that anybody feels. If you will stay in his field and work in his field and labor for him, he causes the work of our hands to be multiplied. But how can he multiply our work if we never work? How can he multiply his blessings if we never position ourselves to be blessed? Ruth, after, even after she had went to the table and got all that good food. She went to the field hungry that day. She didn't have anything, and she got fed, but she stayed in the field even after she was full. Can we get like that with God that even after he gives us a great blessing that we can stay plugged in? That we can stay faithful even after he blesses us? 
How often do we see those that God blesses and that they're in, they're in a bad way. They're in a bad way financially, bad way health-wise. God touches their body. God touches their home. He touches their finances. Then all of a sudden when they got good jobs and good cars and good houses, and like, where are they at? You go from nothing, not even a job, and now you got a job, but we can't find you. We misuse the blessings of God. But I want to stay in the field. Amen. we got to be intentional to stay in the field. As God blesses us, as God pours out his anointing on our life, we got to stay faithful to his word and faithful to our, our, our promises that he's given us and faithful to his will in our life. Because just like Boaz commanded his workers, you make sure Ruth has enough. God has made it his business to watch over every single one of us. Every day he's watching over us. He provides for us. He protects us. And every time you see those handfuls of purpose, you need to make sure you thank God. Because God didn't have to, but he did. I said God didn't have to, but he did. Amen. I got to get ready to stop here. Boaz takes it a step further. He tells his workers, he says, don't you rebuke her either. Again, the gleaners weren't supposed to be there among all that was going on with those that were reaping the sheaves. And but Ruth is given permission. And then all of those extra stalks that fell, that she was taking up, she was given permission to get that. And her being a Moabitess woman, she probably wasn't aware of the, the law that the gleaners, if they did pick up a stalk or something, the stalk was there, they could pick up at the most two. But whenever Boaz said, don't you rebuke her, she says, she says, she says everything she sees, she just. And Boaz said, don't you dare rebuke her for it. Whenever we see our brother or our sister being blessed, why is God blessing them? They really squandered it last time. How come they getting another chance and it seems like I can't get my head above water? If we look at life and look at people like that, <laughs> you're going to be a miserable person. If you're going to make it all about you, how am I feeling today? And how come they're happier? And I, I mean, I done, I've been in church all, and I ain't as happy as they are. How can they smile all the time? I ain't smiled in 50 years. How can they be excited? You just wait. They, that news going to wear off, and they're going to find out. It ain't all it's cracked up to be. If we, if we approach this thing like that, I'm telling you, you're going to be miserable. Because you're always going to be looking for somebody else that's got it worse than you. And whenever you can't find them, you're going to. But I'm just, some, y'all laughing, but I'm just, some people like that. They got to, whenever they're, everything's good in their life, but yet they find something, a reason to be mad, a reason to be sad. Food's on the table, bills are being paid, but yet they find a reason to be mad. And that's the only thing that way some people can be happy. If they find some reason to make somebody else miserable. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun to have the microphone, you know. <laughs> but that's the truth. You might, well, don't raise your hand. But we all know people like that. And it's like, man, why can't you just open your eyes and see where, what's going on in your life? You're blessed. You're making more money than you ever made. Well, glory. Anyhow, I got to find my notes. I told you, let's all stand. That'll make me stop. <laughs> Maybe. Praise God. But basically, she's picking up handfuls of stuff, and there was nobody there that could tell her to do any different. 
Isn't it awesome that we have a church that people can come in and they can be blessed by God? And that I, I believe with all of my heart because I just pray it out of you. If it is in you, then if at least keep it hid. Maybe cast it out of yourself when you get home, praise God. But I, I believe with all of my heart that we don't have people in this church that look at people and say, they don't need that. Again, whenever we're doing stuff to do it for God, it doesn't matter. Look, I passion now, so it's, it's a little, it doesn't mean as much maybe to some, but it's the truth anyway. Whenever, before I started pastoring, whenever I gave my tithes and offerings, Brother Wallace, Pastor Tony, brother, wherever I was, I didn't care what they did with the money. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying, okay? But I'm saying I... I didn't attach strings to anything that I gave. Because once I gave it, it wasn't mine to be. So it's, it's God, God, his ear has done it. Now, again, I'm not saying you shouldn't be accountant, but y'all understand what I'm talking about. And make it, some people may get blessed. And there's some people, look, I promise you, I, I, you know, people's got these creeds. They do it offering time now. It's kind of the new fad now among Christianity. And we mind them doing it. I don't know. But this big old long drawn out thing and, and talk about all the stuff they're going to give. And I can't quote it. I mean, they ain't been thrown on the screen. They can't quote it either, so they put it on the screen so everybody can read it. But I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's good because it's for speaking, speaking things that are not as though they are. And so, so it's, it's a good thing. Again, we might end up doing that one day. I, I don't know. But what I'm getting at is, is that we, they talk about how bonuses and, and, and life insurances and this and that. But, I mean, some, some people, man... Can, can be blessed with so much. And the more they're blessed, the tighter their hands get. I'm serious. And, you know, I've heard people say that don't have anything. If God will bless me with a million dollars, I'll give half of it to the church. Kind of reminds me of that joke. I bet there ain't no trucks down there either. Or you, or you know I got two pigs. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. But, but we got to be careful what kind of commitments we make to God. Amen. I, I sold some property one time, and I thought I was going to make so much money on it. And so I told the, I told the pastor, like, look, whenever I sell this property, I'm going to give half to the church on my, my profit on it. And I, I, it's going to be $5,000. ended up not making but 7000 But I already said I was going to get 5000 So you know what? I gave $5,000 instead of half of it. Because I done said, I didn't just say half. I said, I'm going to give five. So I'm going to go that percentage route next time. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is, is that we, uh, we say these kind of things to God. It's like we forget when he blesses us. I mean, anyhow. But it, 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 I'm going to get off of that. I told you I was going to stop. But it matters how we labor in the field. And it matters how we act after the meal time. When we work in harmony with God's plan and God's purpose, he multiplies the little things. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands. God, I love you so much. God, help us to stay faithful, God. Help us to stay in your field, oh God. God, let us know, Lord, that you're the God that can turn a little into a lot. God, I pray, Lord, that after mealtime, Lord, after you've done showed us all the blessings and all the favor, God, that we understand that favor is not just for us and that blessing's not just for us. But help us, Lord, to then now be your hands and feet to be a blessing to somebody else, to take the little extra, God, to help somebody, Lord, to, to be a blessing to somebody else, to share your love with somebody. Amen. Help us not to neglect that invitation that you've given us to set at your table. Help us to appreciate that, God. Help us, Lord, to be found faithful with that. In the name of Jesus, God, let us know that there is an invitation from heaven. God, every day of our life, God, that's inviting us, Lord, to come to a place that we can be fed spiritually and physically, oh God. Help us, Lord, to be found at that place. God, that we don't turn a deaf ear, God, that we don't live in disobedience, but that we draw near to you. God, every day of our life, help us to draw closer to you because your word promises if we'll draw nigh to you, you will draw nigh to us. And how can we draw nigh to you, God, if we're not in your field? Help us, Lord, to stay there. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody just thankful that we serve that kind of God? God, help us to be thankful for those fountains of living water. That you never let us go thirsty, but you'll fill us every time. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 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 Look at the neighbor and say, you've got to sit at the master's table.
Praise God. Don't forget our announcements. If you don't have a calendar, there's one out there in the foyer. Ladies, again, don't forget.